functions are going to be the main star of the course. So we should be building up sort of a repertoire or a library of functions that we might be interested in studying. Here's the first function in our library, f of x equals x, the identity function. Whatever you plug in, this function outputs that same thing. Here's another function, a constant function. You pick some number c, c stands for constant, right? and then you can define this function, f of x equals c. Whatever you plug in for x, f just ignores that and then outputs the original value c. Here's a function, f of x equals 3x plus 2. And if you're thinking about stuff like that, why not stuff like this? Pick two numbers, a and b, and then you can define a function like this, f of x equals ax plus b. You can think about fifth powers, f of x equals x to the fifth, or nth powers, f of x equals x to the nth for some fixed value of n. You can think about polynomials, like this complicated looking polynomial, f of x equals 2x cubed plus 5x squared minus 2x plus 1. And if you're thinking about polynomials, you might want to think about roots f of x equals, say, the square root of x. You might remember the absolute value function, f of x equals the absolute value of x. You might have some experience with trig functions, like sines, cosines, and tangents. Or with other transcendental functions, like logarithms and exponentials. So now we've got our small library of functions. The identity function, constant functions, polynomials, some trig functions. Now I want more functions. I, I want some way to be able to take two functions and produce a new function out of them. Okay, so in this setup, I've got a conveyor belt, but I've got two functions, a function here and a function here. Let's pick out what these functions should be. Maybe the first function I'll call f, and f of x will be 2x plus 1. So I'll call this function f. And maybe the second function I'll call g, and g will take its input and square it. So g of x will be x squared. So I'll label this function g. And now here, I've got a number 3, and I'm going to run that number through the first function, and whatever comes out of the first function, I'm going to plug into the second function and see what comes out. So let's take that number 3, let's start moving the conveyor belt. It's going to go through the function f. f of 3 is 2 times 3 plus 1, which is 6 plus 1, which is 7. So now we've got a 7 right there. So the 3 went into the function and it came out as a 7. Now I'm going to take the output to f and put it in to the input of g. So g of 7, well, that's going to be 7 squared, and that'll be 49. So here now, coming out of the function g, is the number 49. And I could have written this in a little bit uh, of a shorthand way. I could have just written g of f of 3, right? f of 3 is 7, and g of 7 is 49. So once I've got this sort of conveyor belt metaphor going on in my head, I could do the following trick. I could take two functions, I could take the output to the first function and plug it into the input of the second function.